Welcome everyone to the first data science working group of 2024, which I've obviously not gotten used to updating since I had it in the doc as 2023. It is indeed 2024, so welcome. Thanks for coming. As always, our chaos meetings are under the chaos code of conduct, so please be kind to each other. So we have a list of attendees, so please go ahead and add yourself there along with your favorite words. We've got some good ones on here. Flummox, Raymond, that is also a very, a very excellent word. Um, so thanks everybody. Uh, we do have some space on the agenda for more agenda items. So if there's anything else that you wanna talk about, please please feel free to go ahead and, and add, add to the agenda because this is, this is always more fun if um, I'm not the one talking the whole time and other people, other people have interesting things to talk about. So the first, the first thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about, so, um, for those of you that have been around for a while, the data science initiative, I've had some, some plans for, for what, basically what I needed to do as part of the director of data science for, for chaos. One of those is write some insight guides with the idea being that a lot of people don't know what to do with this pile of metrics and the tools that we give them for, for chaos. So the insight guides are really designed to help people understand what the metrics are telling them, what certain types of metrics are telling them, as well as getting into what are some improvements that they might want to make if the metrics aren't looking so great for their community. So I am I am not going to read through them here, I but what I wanna do is get some feedback from people. So I do have one guide that's written. So that's the responsiveness guide. As I was writing the responsiveness guide, I realized that we really needed an introduction guide because there are a lot of things that are just going to be common to analyzing most types of metrics. So I broke out an introduction as a separate guide with the idea that you read the introduction guide first and then other guides about specific metrics that you're interested in. And then, because I don't want this to be Dawn writing all of the docs, uh, we have a template with the idea that other people can write insight guides for particular types of metrics. So I will kind of walk through the responsiveness one just to give you a feel for, for what we're talking about. Again, these docs are open for, for comments. So if you want to make suggestions, make comments, that would be um, very, very helpful. So, uh, Thank you if you'd like to do that. Um, so what we what we have, we have a section up at the top, which is broadly kind of why, why this particular metric or type of metric is, is important. So in this case, responsiveness. So it talks about why being responsive is important from an open source project standpoint. And then there are um, step one is identifying trends in the metric. So in this case, I looked at time to first response. So it, it shows, shows a graph, talks a little bit about what that means. Um, there's another metric in here, which is the closure ratio and uh, a bit about what that means. And then there's a diagnosis section. So this could be diagnosing problems, identifying opportunities, um, and talks a little bit about how to do that for responsiveness gathering additional data. So you might realize that there's some additional additional data that you need. And I've made some suggestions for metrics models that might be a good place to start next, in particular, again, with, with responsiveness. And then there's a whole make improvements section, which is not really about the metrics, but it's if the metrics tell you that you've got a problem, what can you do about it? And so this is kind of more based on experience uh, from people who've worked in open source projects. So we have a whole section on that, uh, monitoring results, the importance of, you know, you don't just, you don't just make improvements and then never go back and see if they worked. So this talks a little bit about how you might go about monitoring those improvements. And then there's a section on caution and consideration, additional reading, and um, people who have contributed to this document. So with that, I will, I'll just pause and see if people have any questions. Oops. 
questions, thoughts? I, I have one. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about this in the middle of the night, actually, Dawn, <laughs> when I was slacking you. When you're awake at four o'clock in the morning and sending yeah. me Slack messages. Yes, that then. Um, <laughs> would, would there ever be a case or do you see value in looking at the data provided by um, sites such as Compass on <clears throat> projects that are doing this well? Like, would, would you ever identify projects that are doing this well and they like maybe reach out to them for a case study or get their input on that? Like, I'm just curious how we can use the data to kind of um, back up what you're what, what we're saying in the insight guides or, you know, or is there value in that? Is there, do you see that as a future or something like that? I don't know. Um, so, so yes and no. So I do see that as something that would be incredibly important. I actually see that as probably being separate from the insight guides and being, I would love to see us do a whole series of case studies about how people have used certain metrics, what they've done with them, um, and the reason I say I think it's better to do that as case studies is because every project is different. So when you highlight a specific project that does something well, what what does that mean? Um, would that definition of well hold for other types of projects? Maybe, maybe not. Um, and so I'm I'm reluctant to to put too many examples in the um, in the insight guides, but I would really, really like to see us have some good case studies. Yeah, even just like um, a project that, you know, and I don't know how you would do this, but um, I th I'm pretty sure we could look at trends from Compass and just like what what were the strategies that they employed to make this number move? And mm -hmm. you know, maybe there's some good nuggets in there that we can repurpose or use or even like write a blog post together with that project or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what level of like engagement that you want um, with, with that because I mean, that's like huge right like that's just so much work but um yeah. i was just thinking about that how those those that data could feed into or supplement i guess the inside guide so yeah yeah i would i would really like that and i think we could include them as additional reading like in this in this additional reading section um, can i ask a meta question yes Sean. When, when you talk about compass are you talking about like showing the trends on the compass project or are you talking about using compass to measure things elizabeth using compass or whatever you know whatever Auger, yeah whatever we want um grimoire lab compass because it's like that data is already in there you know from projects that they've included so whatever you know whatever we end up doing with that but um, i think the reason she's saying compass is because compass does a really nice job of showing lots of trends at the top of every metrics model um, so it, it is, it is one that it's a tool that people tend to think of when they think of trends, just because it, okay. um, I'm following now front and center. I got meta confused cause I'm involved in the tool world. Thank you. <laughs> it's not that we couldn't use Augur to show those trends or Grimoire Lab right. to show those trends or okay. yeah, any other, any other tool. I don't mean to answer for you, Elizabeth, but that's what I kind of assumed. Okay. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Thank you. Uh, Matt. I know I've asked this before. Could you tell me the relationship between metrics, metrics models, and insight guides? Um, I <laughs> and I've struggled to answer it every single time, which is why you keep asking it, <laughs> which is totally fair. Um, I think there's um they're obviously related. Um, I don't necessarily think that for every uh, I don't think it'll be a direct relationship in every case. So I think that um, most metrics models are likely to have a few insight guides that apply to the types of metrics in those models. So for example, this one obviously has two metrics in it. So you've got an insight guide with two metrics. Um, and for the starter project health metrics model, I expect to have three insight guides, one for responsiveness, which is this one, one for releases and one for um, bus factor. Um, and, and so the bus factor one will likely be called something like contributor risk and have bus factor as one of a couple of different metrics. So it's not, it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one relationship because as I was starting to write the the insight guide i i started to think mm -hmm. about it like do i just write one for change request closure ratio but i think it's helpful 
in the case of responsiveness to look at a couple of different metrics at the same time, because I think they give you different pictures of what's what's going on. So they give you different ways to look at, at, at what's happening in your project. So I think it's helpful for the insight guides to have several metrics in them and be focused on a topic that people. So, so I tend to think of these as, um, as kind of a, so, so we use the, the question, question, uh, answer. I forget goal what that's question called. Goal, goal question metric. Goal question metric model. Um, I see, I see these as kind of, um, either, either sort of like a, the goal or kind of a meta question. So in each individual metric has a question that someone might be asking, but I see the insight guides as solving a slightly bigger question. So, you know, in this case, how do I improve the responsiveness of my community, um, which is bigger than any single, any single metric, but not as big as an entire metrics model. So I'm, I'm wondering, I don't know how we would do this, but this, what I'm looking at here is tied to the starter project health metric model. Mm -hmm. As you talk about like potentially accompanying, you know, one or two potentially accompanying a metric model. Um, one of the things that we've been asked for in chaos is, you know, could you provide insights for organizations that are in different stages of maturity, so to speak, um, with respect to their engagement with open source. And the Starter Project Health Metric Model is somewhat unique because it's just, mm -hmm. it's, it's actually kind of part of that temporal line. It's called the Starter Project. It's assuming very early in maturity for an organization. A lot of our other metrics models aren't like that. They are they're more around specific things, kind of like this guide. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering if the metrics models, and again, I don't know how we would do this, if the metrics models would be at potentially stages of maturity could be one. They could be um, particular contexts that want to be explored. I, I don't know what the, the yeah. titles of those models would be. And then within there, there are these guides that say, all right, so you, you're doing, you're in the starter stuff. Yep. You need to take a look at responsiveness. Just a thought. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I'll, I'll be honest, these guides are never going to map cleanly to uh, uh, metrics and metrics models um, because there are so many things that you want to gain insights for around a project. Um that I I think that we want to be careful not to couple them too closely, uh, just because. Um, and if you look at some of the models, they have, you know, so, some of the models have kind of common elements. So like this responsiveness piece, I think might also apply to some of the other metrics models as well. Well, it certainly could. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, even if you're like at a mature state, you still care about responsiveness. Yes. <laughs> that, that's definitely something that you care about. Yeah. Um, I, I agree. These are basically you know, heuristic guides for interpreting the metrics and metrics models from a project's perspective. So it asks the project to think about the things in the model. And this is why I think we need to think very carefully about how we display this data on the website. Because I think that we'll have we'll have you know a series of pages which are the insight guides, and then we'll have some sort of structure which points people to those those pages, but there might be lots of types of things pointing to a page. I think until we get a few more of these defined, I think it's going to be. Um, I mean, I think. Let me back up. I think the way we should focus on the insight guides is what what is a contained thing that people are trying to understand and get insights about. Um, it's not necessarily a metric. It may be more than one metric. It's not necessarily a model. It may be a model, but I think I think we need to think about this um, not from like the chaos perspective out, but from like the the consumers of metrics. In. So what what are the people who are consuming our metrics trying to understand? And how do we help them understand that? 
And how do we do it in a way where we can we can also link it back to some metrics and, and metrics models for them to get more to get more information. So these will always link back to metrics and metrics models where we have them that, that apply. But I think we should really be focused on the, the problems that people are trying to solve. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I under, I get it. I, I do. I, I mean, like, I understand what you're saying, like these very specific things like responsiveness that they're trying to solve. But even looking at, at this right here, we have primary metrics, which if I just think like directionally or, you know, whatever, below <laughs> this insight guide. And I have the starter project health metric model that is above this guide. And I don't have any problem with that, the, like what, what I'm seeing here. And I understand that it might be different for different guides. But if I look at our list of current metric models, some of them are called like project engagement or development responsiveness. And so I'm just, I, we, I think we need to think through how we're not confounding two things together, which would be the insight guides and the metric models. So that if somebody is coming to chaos and we're like, well, we have this insight guide that's around responsiveness and we have this metric model that's, that's around mm -hmm. responsiveness. I know it's developer responsiveness, a very particular kind of responsiveness, but just how we make sure that those two things don't end up kind of colliding with each other. Okay. And so the, the thought was, is that the metric models take a position of like maturity could be one of the dimensions that metrics models live in. So starter project health, you've been doing this for a year. You've been doing this for 10 years. I don't know what the, the maturity, what that um, dimension would be. Um, I'm just, my concern largely, it's not with the delivery of information. It just largely stems from the potential overlap that some of these may present. Mm -hmm. I don't know. How, I'll but, be honest. I don't know how to answer that yet. No, uh, I don't either. <laughs> yeah, I'm not <laughs> looking for an answer. I'm, I'm I'm just thinking through these things, and it can be yeah. sorted out for sure. Um, so, what, yeah, what so I, I can I can tell I, you what I saw. <clears throat> uh, but before you do that, what I think what I think might help, and what I will take an action item to do is to um, to look at all the metrics models and come up with like a draft list of um, insight guides. And then that will, I think, help us see how, how we can make sure that these kind of map together and that we're not confusing people. Um, because I, I think if, if I, if I come up with, with this, that, that does a couple of things. One, it, it kind of shows us how this stuff might map together and what it would look like beyond this starter project health model, which as Matt rightly points out, is very different from most of our other models. Um, and it would give me something to create issues for and encourage other people to write insight guides. Does that seem like a reasonable next step? Yeah, it does. I think that would be great. Just okay. taking a look at what's in front of us, really, is what it comes up with, <laughs> comes down to. Cool. Okay, Sean, go ahead. Well, <clears throat> when I've helped different organizations make sense of their data, this this guide, these guides, these insight guides are, I think, a documentation of the kind of thought process that gets followed in, in the course of doing that. So sometimes there have been metrics, sometimes metrics and metrics models have existed, but in every case, when I've collaborated with an organization, <clears throat> those those particular metrics and metrics models have had to be shifted, tuned, and adapted to whatever the specific questions they have about, in this case, responsiveness. And this guide is, I thought, I found it helpful to think through it. I found it a helpful documentation of how to think through that process in a structured way when you're trying to actually put this in play for an organization. 
Yeah, and that's a really good point because that is kind of what the the these insight guides are designed to do is to really help people think through um, what this means for their particular project and their particular organization because every project is different, every organization is different. There's no there's no one size fits all. You can't say if responsiveness is down, do X. Um, right. What you can say is here are the things you can think about. Here are some things you can try. Here are some things that you should you should look at. And so these these are designed really around around that thought process. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I have nothing more to add. <laughs> All right. Any other any other comments or thoughts on the insight guides? I do encourage you to have a look. Um, feel free to leave comments, feedback. Um, I'm I'm open to open to any of that. I would love to get people's thoughts and collaboration on these guides. Okay, so the next question uh, on the agenda, how can new members interested start contributing to this working group? With a sub question, is there a particular tool stack that data scientists in this working group typically use? Um, so those are those are hard questions. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna back up and talk for just a second about so when we, when we originally formed this working group, it was, hey, you know, we we have a new data science initiative. Um, we have a list of things that Dawn has said she's going to do, um, which are really more around analysis uh, or helping helping other people analyze their data. You know, it's been it's been less about like hardcore data sciencey tasks that I need to do. Um, so with with that said. Um, we haven't had a good way to get other people to contribute to the data science working group. I think one way to do this is, is you know, if people want to write some of these um, insight guides, but I feel like that's not the kind of work that people are looking for out of this group. I think that what people are looking for, and you can chime in here and let me know if this is correct, but based on kind of the questions I've been getting from people in Slack, is people would really like to do some data science around some some chaos data, and um, and use it as either a way to contribute your data science skills to the chaos project, or to learn some new data science skills um, that you can then take and use use elsewhere. Is this is this kind of what people are looking for out of this working group? I'm I'm curious to get some feedback from from some of the folks that. I don't talk to you all the time. And feel free to do that in the chat too. Um, Brian. Oh, okay. Sure. I'm the one who wrote the question. So oh, very good. yeah. Okay, so you are right. I, th I think you are correct. And also maybe some of us might be interested because I do data science too, but I'm also a technical writer. So it would be fun for me to also write the insight guide. But I'm also thinking if someone does data science and they hate documentation and they hate writing, they hate doing reports, Power BI and all that, they wouldn't be into writing the insight guides and all that. So I would say yes or no. So if someone is into technical writing or loves writing, they might be interested in the in writing insight guides. But if someone is just into the coding part of it, so yeah, they are just interested into the coding part of it. So I mean, yes, you are correct, yes, but maybe some of us are interested in the in writing the insight guides and some of us maybe are just interested in the coding bit. But I'm one of those who are interested in both because I do technical writing and I also do data science. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Okay, thank you so much. That's really that's really helpful. Um, so, so what I was Raymond had a comment to it. Oh, had... yeah, go ahead, Raymond. Oh, I, I was just going to add to that. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Um, Ruben and I, uh, uh, we, we come from, um, more of the engineering data science -y side of things. And so, um, we're always looking to do more analysis on, you know, interesting open source, um, uh, you know, metrics and insights and generating Jupyter notebooks on things like that. Um, we've been uh, trying to do that uh, uh, in, in the public. Um, and to the extent that we can help, you know, uh, think through, I guess, like the um, the experience <clears throat> of what it would, you know, do, doing more data science in um, this community, as well as helping potentially help write, you know, technical documentation.
information on how to help people, other people get started if that's what they're interested in. Mm -hmm. You know, very interested in contributing there if we can. Awesome. Thank you. Anyone else? There were just a few comments. I'm not sure if you're seeing those. Sophia had a couple. Yeah, yeah. As, as Sophia mentioned, this this is also a good space for collective um, brainstorming and problem solving. So we've had a couple of really interesting discussions around um, some aspects of, of analyzing open source data. Like uh, I think there was one around kind of thresholds, for example, and and how do you how do you think about that for open source projects? Um, so yeah, so that's another another good use of the space. What are your um, thoughts, Don? What? What are your thoughts? Yeah, so here's what I was thinking. <laughs> um, I was thinking that um, what we what we might want to do is come up with a couple of maybe questions that that people have and maybe we can get a few people together and do some little little research projects um using some of the the chaos data so um you know so we would need to think about what what it is that we want to want to research what questions we want to answer um how do we how do we get the data? Assuming we get it out of something like like Augur or Grimoire Lab, um, and and what would that what would that look like? But I think it would be I think it would be kind of fun to come up with a couple of projects that we can that we can all work on together. Um, because, I mean, let's face it, data science is one of those things that it's um, it's a lot of different types of skills that. Combine, and I think we all have different approaches, different skills, different different backgrounds, and so I think it would be something interesting that we could all learn from each other. Now the question is, how do we come up with those projects? Okay, Matt, you go. Well, I was thinking we have the the corporate OSPO context group. We have the university OSPO working group, and we have science. And so Sophia also has lots of ideas, lots of ideas and many questions. Um, but it'd be kind of fun if over time, you know, we could bring back, you know, like quote answers to questions that these different context groups have. Um, just a thought. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, Brian, am I saying your name right? Feel free to correct me if I'm not. Yeah, you're saying it correctly. <laughs> yeah. So maybe what I was thinking on how we can come up with the projects and everything is why not have something like a project scope document where someone just, I can volunteer to work on this project scope document where it has all the questions like what question does this fix to answer? What data do you need exactly? And that one might even now attract people to become collaborators because maybe you have a project idea, but you don't have it fully. So by you writing on that project, by you answering the questions in the project scope and posting it in the Slack channel, hey, I have an idea about this project, but I can't fully wrap my head around this project scope. Can someone maybe chip in? Do you have any ideas on this? And then now you can get a collaborator from the same and you can now run through those ideas together so I don't know, but having something like a project scope document where you get to someone, the working group members can get to understand what exactly this project will do, what data you need, what question does this project answer, how is it important to the chaos community, and all those questions in it. I don't know, just random thoughts. Yeah, I really, I really like that approach. I think that would help us. I think that would help us get organized and help us uh, find some things that that people can that people can work on and structure it in a way that um, kind of gets us all on the same page at, at the beginning, which I think would be helpful. Okay, cool. Then I will work on the project corp document. Uh, probably before the end of this week and share it in the Slack channel uh, for your thoughts and maybe we can also collaborate. Maybe you can add something to the document. Yeah. That would be fantastic. Thank you. Okay, sure. Any other thoughts on that? 
Sophia thinks that if we open this up to people that that we'll we'll get some ideas. Um, I do think we should add this to the agendas for some of the the working groups to see if um, like like Matt said, you know, you, we've got one for OSPOs, universities for science um, and research, and maybe people will will have some some ideas of some things that they would like to see us analyze. It might be thinking of the university open source group too. Could I think because so many of them are so early mm -hmm. with the development of their uh, OSPOs. Also just kind of seeing the kind of to Brian's point, like the process that people go through, like what what are the tools that are available? What is the data that's available? What needs to happen to that data? Um, so it may not answer the question perfectly, but it also describes how you might uh, approach this question or similar questions in their own university. Yeah, exactly. And, and I also think, you know, um, if, if any of you are working on something, working on something interesting, doing some interesting analysis, you can certainly also bring it to this group to get feedback on it. So um, anyone can add stuff to the agenda. This is not Dawn adds, Dawn adds stuff to the agenda and then that's what we talk about. This is, this is really a community working group meeting. So I, I love to see other people adding stuff to the agenda for, for us to talk about. And so if you're doing some, some interesting research and want some feedback or just want to share some results of something interesting you've done, um, yeah, please add, add those to future agenda agenda items. I'm happy to happy to um, hear other people talk about stuff that, that is exciting for them. Any other thoughts on this on this topic? I, I am a huge, I would be a big fan of using some of this time to do some of that technical work. And mm -hmm. obviously you can't do everything, but it's almost like splitting the community call that we do around ChaosCon. Like we could talk about insight guides, maybe the technical documentation is a better way of putting it, mm -hmm. part of it. And then um, just more, more, more tool and data driven than another part of it. Yeah, I think yeah. that's, a, I think that would be good if that's what people want, then that'd be exciting. Cool. Um, so that was, that's actually all we have on the agenda for today. So let me ask the question. So uh, so the Red Hat folks were at a all day OSPO meeting or all week OSPO meeting, I think this week. Um, so I bumped the eight knot agenda item at Callie's request. Uh, so I think we'll talk about that in two weeks when we meet next. Are there other things? Um, let's Let's also do an update on um, how people contribute. Anything else we wanna do next week? Or sorry, not next week, in two weeks. I, I do wanna bring up that in two weeks is January 31st. So people might be traveling to Brussels for Chaos Con. So just bring that up. Oh, excellent point. Um, I will yeah. be in transit during this call I, myself. I will be on on a Eurostar train during this call. <laughs> I, I think. think. I know. I, I might. I might actually be in Brussels by that by that point. Um, I I too, but I don't know if I want to have a meeting. <laughs> like just uh, there doesn't mean I want to. <laughs> yeah, we meeting, could do a yeah. meet up, Matt. Meet up, not meeting. I, I like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so we will, we will probably, um, well, maybe we can um, put it up next. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, why don't we, why don't we leave it on the schedule? Um, and if there are things that people want to talk about, um, maybe I can get somebody else to volunteer to facilitate it. It's just that the I guess a lot of us won't won't be there. Matt, what were you gonna I, say? Go ahead, Sophia. Oh no, I just have a topic idea, but I also am gonna be very jet lagged and maybe sleeping. So I, I don't think I should lead anything. That's it. I don't want to commit to anything. 
sounds like a good fine idea now. But in the I book. should write it down because yeah. it's a topic I'd seems, love to bring to this group. Yeah, seems good on paper. Yeah, try to take care of my future self. Um, my, my my thought was is that you know there's a couple things in here about bringing some of these. So if, I think if if, if Brian has the scope document set out, you know by the end of the week or whatever the timing is on that. That's something that we could bring to the OSPO and the university and the science groups next week. So mm -hmm. it's, it's something that we can share and talk about if there's any particular questions that folks want to um, address. So I think we can kind of work at least asynchronously by pulling some of those questions from the other context groups and certainly share that back via Slack to everybody here. Okay, so we'll do the next meeting on the 14th. So we'll have a Valentine's Day meeting. Hey. No, oh, okay, sure. But I think I will have the work, the project scope document by the end of this week. And then probably next week during the OSPO meetings, we can discuss the same. Perfect. Yes, that, that would be perfect. And we can continue. Um, you know, once you start working on it, you can post it in Slack. And so we can continue to work on it um, even when we're not in meetings. So we can we can all kind of work together and come up with ideas. Okay, sure. I'll do that. Perfect. Okay. Anything, anything else before we adjourn? Do I take my topic today? Do we have enough time? Or I just put it in next week, next time. Oh, what's your topic? Sorry. Oh, sorry. That was under future agenda. Um, I know. I, I snuck it in there. <laughs> no, do it now. Do it now. It might, it might be too big for this, but I, I guess I was thinking about it and it actually sparked when you're talking about project, projects that this group could take on and people of this group. And actually, Sean, I'm thinking about Kate Stewart's tagging project that she took on on behalf of the risk working group like years ago. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Where we were trying to look at the viability of using tags as an assessment of health and what's happening in the community by looking at composition, naming, like could we have an effective metric that says um, mean time to resolve bugs would re require that people actually are consistently using a bug tag on issue trackers. Um, and so basically saying, could we even assume these parameters before we design a metric? And we went down this huge rat hole of looking at tagging and popular tags and grouping of tags. Um, and it was kind of untenable. Not surprising. We, we do have a nice uh, map of the most popular tags. and Yeah. You know. But it, it kind of like it sparked kind of a, a general question to this group. I don't know. I, I've, as someone who's looked at a lot of messy data around this topic, the usage of categorization and tagging, I've never seen consistently done unless somebody sets a standard. Yeah. Um, and so I often find myself creating one based on what I see and then overlaying the data with whatever tagging or categorization makes the most sense in my own context. Um, but that's incredibly manual and incredibly custom. Um, and so I was curious if, I mean, now that we're in the age of modeling um, and looking at like, I have done some sort of like, how many times is this worth repeating? Should that be a viable tag? But it's often never enough to just take what the output says. I always end up reviewing it and manually doing it. And I was, yeah, now that I'm talking through it, I don't know if we can get this done in four minutes, but um, I was just kind of curious if this like resonates with anyone, if this is a topic that's interesting to anyone, how we think about designing broader characteristics and categories within our tagging structures to make our data more usable. I think this is a data messiness problem and we're gonna have to get to this kind of question this kind of work eventually. <laughs> Am I the only one who struggles with this? What? Why is why is this an issue? Um, I guess in our case, we are always looking at a portfolio problem. Um, if it's just one project, I don't think these things really apply. You're going to design the tags and things that are most relevant to you in your community. When we interact with thousands and tens of thousands of projects, there's always the question of like, so what's in there? What are we doing? What's most important? And when they say what's most important, it might not just be like, we use Python, but it's like, what kinds of things, like how much time are we spending on languages? How much time are we spending on operating systems? How much time are we spending on 
various elements or developer frameworks or specific stacks or language components. Um, and so there starts to be is question, questions designed around specific things. And to understand what the things are, we need to have tags in association with those things, whether or not it's number of projects or the languages that we're involved in across our project portfolio, um, or even the foundation, like, I don't know, there's so many other layers that people might want to bucket and segment. Like often when you get a question, it's always like, well, I want to know this about the Java ecosystem. And you're like, okay, can I even filter by that? I don't think I can. Um, and so I often find that to address specific questions within my organization, I have to add these types of overlays um, to sometimes incredibly large data sets and it is highly manual. <laughs> Uh, at least I try to automate portions of it, but like things break down, you can't always do it and you don't potentially have like a source you can point to to automate it. So um, I guess that's how I, it's been coming up in, in my world in terms of, I guess, providing more of a useful lens to pop on an existing analysis. Um, Matt, does that answer your question? Yeah, it br brings up another question, which is, is this a, is this a concern about the, the tags themselves? like the, the accuracy of the tags, or is it a, a question about how I see the collection of tags across a su supply chain of projects or an ecosystem of projects? I guess I, in a perfect world, we'd have a consistent set of tags everywhere, which I think is a pie in the sky type of thing. But like one Uber categorization framework of any project related metadata. And if we had a consistent set of tags and everyone use it and we can all apply it to our data sets then i think that would inc like exponentially extend the analysis potential of any data set we're looking at but generally i haven't seen anyone ever use the same set of tags uh even in something like industry categorization so it's it's always been i don't know again again highly manual and uncomfortable so this is an issue about it's about creating consistent tagging in an in an area. Is that the hope? It could it could it could be it could okay. be. Um, I guess more that like I didn't want to jump to a what's most useful because I can tell you what's most useful for yeah, me. Yeah. Uh, but the thought of bringing it to this group is that I think if others are having other struggles in this area, then that might help to broaden or at least provide another perspective on. Yeah, that's what they say. On this and issue and whether or not something like that would be helpful. I think it can help to think of this as, I mean, it's it's really a metadata problem. Like, how do we how do we get the useful data about our data so that we can pull apart the things that we need and you know maybe not worry about some some other bits. Mm -hmm. I mean, Matt, that might might just be a different way of, of thinking about that. Yeah, yeah, no, I think yeah, that's great. I think this is super interesting. You know, made me wonder if. Just from a tagging perspective, are there are there some tags that even though they're not totally consistent, seem to be reasonably consistent, and others that just seem to uh, I don't know some things that people are trying to set tags out against. It's just a it's a, just a broken system, and so I'm wondering, or is it all is the entire thing broken? You know, <laughs> it's <laughs> well, it's it's not. I like to think of it as the like file folder problem. Like when you open your new machine and you create your first document and you put it under a file that says documents, and then you have 10 more documents and maybe you'll label it 2024. And then you have 15 more documents and you might label it work for Google. Like you start to create this artificial metadata structure around all the things that you created because it happens organically. Sorry, I just went down another rabbit hole. No, no, no. That's and then no, and then I think your your point is is that my organic creation is naturally different than your organic creation is different than Don's organic creation. And if we try to look at us collectively as to what we're working on, all of the way that we attend to our metadata, these tags on our data is just it, it's just impossible to hold up to yeah. that sometimes. Well, I guess I wanted to bring it up because in all of this. I was thinking about a very specific chaos question, uh, which is if we say revisit the Kate Stewart tagging popularity discussion or analysis that she did a few years ago, um, what can we learn about a project health by the frequency and usage of their tags? I think we potentially could learn a lot in terms of the types of tags that are being created around the issues 
Um, and we talk about all these other signals for something like project health and state and of the yeah. project he, life cycle of the project life cycle of the community. Yeah, even though we didn't finish the project with Kate, I think we still learned a lot from going through it. Yeah, but it might be interesting to revisit it. I mean, we have... I don't know. We have different different technologies, different tools, different ways of thinking about things. There might be there might be something interesting, some interesting insights that we didn't come up with the first the first time around. Because it's yeah. I mean it's it's complicated, right? Because open source projects are all they're all different. Um, uh, they're they're ultimately uh, collections of people doing stuff, and we all do things differently. So it's this. It's just it's this. Open source is messy. People are messy. Um, data is messy. Kind of thing. All feeding. All feeding together. Yeah, but, but I, at the same time, but they they came together to create something organic, and the tag structure is a reflection of that too. So I think we potentially could learn a lot about even the social technical system of the project by the tagging structure. Yeah, this absolutely. is a huge hypothesis. So again, like grounded in nothing, but Sophia has thought. I do think it sounds like something interesting to explore for sure. I think that, I think it's a great idea. We'll need to go back. I don't know. Can somebody dig up the stuff that you did with Kate and maybe share that in the Slack channel later so that we can at least see what, what the output of the, the first round was and see maybe what we could iterate on. And I know Sophie and I both have access to those spreadsheets, so it's a race to find them. <laughs> You're on, John. All right, you're going to probably win because I have to run to campus for my next meeting. <laughs> okay, any any quick final thoughts because we're already two minutes over time. I found the thing. There it is. Oh, you found it. Sweet. Wait, Matt found it first? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I started that, putting that stuff in the chaos drive. Thing if you haven't figured yeah. this out yet, it, it probably also helps. I put it in the chaos drive because oh. that's a, that I just went sense. to the I went to the risk working group. Yeah, and then it was one of only a couple of spreadsheets in there. So yeah, okay. Can one of you sort be... of summarize it and drop it in? Drop the link in the Slack channel so that just to kind of give people. So it's not yeah. just like a a random spreadsheet. Give people a little context about it if somebody has some time that would be helpful okay noted one of us will do it now that's a race now that's a race all right yeah that's okay. not going to be thank me you. either so <laughs> all right i gotta go thank you everybody so much i feel like this was a fun meeting and i think we've got some excellent next steps so i look forward to seeing all of you in slack and then again on february 14th thanks Thanks. Oh, hey, Elizabeth, can you cancel the meeting? Do you have access to do that? I can, First. and I will. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Bye, everybody.